This is Ray Balzer with AIM Pro Billiards. In this part of the video series, we'll do an overview of the many methods to figure out the cut angle of a shot when you are not yet able to judge it confidently. If you haven't watched part one, you should do that now. And this advanced series will make much more sense to you if you first watch some or all of the other AIMRIGHT videos especially the overview and shooting the 16 basic cut angles. Go to the AIM Pro Billiards channel to find them. We will cover three primary techniques. First, the contact point method, then many ways to measure using your cue stick, and last, a way using table geometry. We'll apply these techniques to regular shots, combination shots, and banks. Now, there's a technique of using angles between your fingers to determine pull angles, but it's mostly just for showing 30 and 90 degrees for cue ball direction after the shot, and that's not precise enough for cut angle determination. Recall the learning process we covered in Part 1. Use it here also, but with some changes. At first, use the method to get the angle, then confirm it with the aim right. Later, with skill, you could just figure out the angle and then shoot it, and if you miss, go back and use the aim right and figure out what went wrong. Even better, first estimate the angle, then figure it with a method and compare and resolve. When shooting the money ball, use several methods to double check yourself before shooting. Now let's start with the contact point technique. This is the most obvious method, and it's the most natural one for the average pool player. Visualize the contact point on the object ball, and this is critical with your vision center aligned with the cue ball contact point, estimate its distance, either from the center or the edge, in sixteenths of a ball radius. From this number, if you aren't concerned with position play, you might be able to go directly from the known contact point to aiming without knowing or using the actual cut angle value. This is what most of you have been doing all along, but I recommend you identify the cut angle in all cases. We can immediately know the cut angle based on the contact point location. We'll get it from the user's guide at first, and then we'll quickly memorize it. The user's guide lists the ball hit fraction, which corresponds to the distance from the edge. If you can do this well for all 16 cut angles, that's all you need, because it can work in all table positions. But not all of us are so lucky as to be able to see the contact point as precisely as needed at all cut angles. We may need further methods. Or maybe we just want to double check ourselves. If you can develop your ability to estimate distances in inches, the second set of techniques might work well for you. There are many ways to estimate the cut angle using your cue stick. First, find the point near the butt end that is 57 inches from the tip because we'll use that point for many of these variations. Touch the tip to the ghost ball location and swing the cue stick through the arc between the object ball to pocket line and cue ball to ghost ball line. Estimate the distance between the two points. For 57 inch distance, it's almost exactly one degree per inch. This method works very well up to a 40 degree cut angle. After that, the angle is progressively a bit more than the distance. At 77 degrees, the measurement will only be about 71 inches. This technique is not affected by reach, as long as you are good at noting the endpoints and estimating the distance. There's an alternative I prefer that's accurate to any angle. You need to be able to judge 10 inches. Then you can string segments together. You see this can work really well, so practice judging a 10 inch swing. But many people can't estimate distance well enough. An alternative I use a lot that still uses the same fundamental cue stick measurement idea 
is to use your body to help measure the distance. It works very well, but only for some table positions. Most players' hips or waist are close to 15 inches wide. Use the aim right and align the cue stick near one hip while aligned with the two pocket line. Then move the stick to the other side of your body and see how close you are to the 14 and a half degree line. Try different body landmarks to find what works. Then see where the intermediate body locations are for 3.6, 7.2, and 10.8 degrees. Now you can try to extend your arm directly to the side and see if there's a grip location that allows you to exactly extend to the 30 degree mark. With longer arms, grip closer to the butt and stand further away from the ball. With shorter arms, grip closer to the Q-tip and stand a bit closer. Be careful to identify an exact arm angle laterally and vertically. Then see the intermediate angle locations. It's more difficult to go beyond 30 degrees, but it can be done by transferring hands. Warning, when the object ball is far away and the table is in the way, don't reach forward. Your numbers will be wrong. Your body always has to be at the same distance from the ghost ball. One workaround for this is to measure the angle from the other side. Go to the other side of the object ball and hold the Q-tip in the air at the ghost ball location and swing your arms as before. One line is pointed from the ghost ball back to the cue ball. The other line is from the ghost ball to the pocket. A final cue stick technique. This time, instead of using a point near the butt, 57 inches from the tip, we'll use a point only 15 inches from the tip. And the arc just goes to a line parallel to the ball to pocket line. For an arc with a 15 inch radius, each quarter inch corresponds to approximately one degree. To use this technique, you'll need to place a mark 15 inches from the tip or use painter's tape. Actually, you need to touch the tip 15 inches past the base of the cue ball. With the cue elevated to clear the cue ball, you would need a point about 15 and a quarter inches from the tip to be over the center of the cue ball. So either use a separate mark there, or remember to do that offset. Start on the line of the center of the cue ball to the center of the ghost ball. Touch the tip to the table 15 inches past the cue ball. Then pivot until the cue stick is parallel to the line of the object ball to the pocket. Now, estimate the distance in inches between the 15 inch mark and the point on the cloth where the center of the cue ball rests. Multiply the distance in inches by four for degrees. Or better, I think, just estimate the distance to the edge of the cue ball and multiply that by four and add four and a half degrees for the cue ball radius. To help yourself better estimate the distance, you could place an additional reference mark on the cue stick. I'd suggest nine inches from the tip. Then you will have marked lengths of nine and six and 15 inches to use as visual references. This technique is especially useful for long distances and awkward angles. One problem with this technique is knowing when you have the line parallel to the ghost ball the pocket line. Consider this case. The cue ball is further away, and that means the parallel line is shifted further sideways, making it more difficult to estimate. There's a nice solution available because this technique actually works on ratios. So instead of a quarter inch and 15 inches, multiply both by two 
and get 1 half inch and 30 inches. So mark the Q-stick at 30 inches and every half inch is 1 degree. On my Q-stick it's easy. The joint collar is at 30 inches. Let's see how that solves the problem. So we got 15 inches closer, which will make the parallel line easier to estimate. So here are the numbers. The measurement is 13 and 5 eighths, not shown. And times 2 now instead of times 4. And now we add the cue ball, which is half of what we've done before. More surprises. 15 inches is a compromise number picked to even out the errors at the low and high cut angles. We can improve our accuracy a bit by using 14 and a half for most angles and 15 and a quarter for angles over 60 degrees. So now the method looks like this. And now more marks on our cue stick. Now I'll illustrate the last line of this chart. This is a 7.2 degree cut angle. It's about six and a half inches, which is six and a half degrees, and add the cue ball for another one and an eighth degrees, 7.6 degrees versus the 7.2. It's pretty close. Combination shots. And as described in part one, the aim right angle technique can really help compared to memorizing shot angles, which can't work with combo shots. Let's look at how to apply the various techniques to figure the combo cut angle. These shots are inherently much harder because there's much less margin for error. Thus, you might need all 32 aim right angles, the 16 listed ones and the 16 in between ones. You work backwards from the ball to be pocketed, the second ball. Determine its cut angle, then the cut angle for the first ball, the one you're shooting at. If the balls are close together, the first ball will be sliding when it hits the second ball, and cut-induced throw will be larger. Throw angle is larger for a sliding ball, cuts near 30 degrees, and at lower speeds. Factor that into the cut angles. You might use different techniques for each ball. I typically just use judgment for the second ball, otherwise I think the combo is just too difficult. Cue stick measurement from the back side avoids ball interference. Consider where the first ball will travel. You don't want it to interfere with your next shot. And always consider a cue ball position. Depending on the cut angles, Remember to shoot harder because of the energy lost to the intermediate balls. If shooting a combo for the game ball, such as in 9 ball or 10 ball, usually shoot firmly so that a miss doesn't leave a hanger for your opponent, or try to hide the cue ball, or consider caroming the cue ball into the game ball instead, which will more likely separate the game ball from the ball that must be hit first an advantage if you miss. Now, let's consider bank shots. Aim right, angle-based shooting offers some unique advantages, especially in making adjustments. The general approach is to first consider what initial line you want for the object ball, and then determine the cut angle for that, then make adjustments. The initial line should be based on whatever banking method you prefer whether it's just judgment or some system. For me, it varies and depends on the particular shot, but I usually favor a simple diamond bisect system, but I've used many others as well. 
After choosing the initial line, measure the cut angle for that normally using any of the techniques, including table geometry, but that requires some simple modifications and that will be described elsewhere. Now, the really interesting part, adjustments. Bank shots usually must be adjusted for the many factors that influence bank direction, especially including speed, cushion impact angle, table conditions, and any spin on the banked ball. In the famous book, Banking with the Beard, a system is described to trade off angle or shot line with speed and spin. I have found that the aim right angles provide me a better way to consider and adjust the angle or shot line aspect. So instead of varying the fractional ball hit or the diamond target, as he suggests, instead make an incremental change to the cut angle. But how much adjustment? His normal adjustment is a quarter ball hit, which I translate into being a 14 and a half degree cut angle change. Freddy the Beard also suggests measuring and applying side spin in one tip increments. With respect, I'd suggest that an aim rate trained player can adjust in 5% increments, and that allows for more nuanced adjustments, including exact cancellation of cut induced throw, as Jack Kohler suggests in his Science of Pocket Billiards. Or it allows you to shoot in an aim rate cut angle and add or subtract a little with a 5% change in side spin. Now, I'm not ready to present my own system. Instead, I'll suggest referencing sources who have data to use. For example, Kohler's Science of Pocket Billiards gives tables and graphs of data that show how various factors affect the bank. I've noticed that on tables I play on, to adjust for cushion rebound error, for banks near the pocket, like a half a diamond away, at medium speed, I need to add about five degrees towards the pocket. And by one and a half diamonds away, I need to add 12 to 15 degrees, or less when the ball is further from the rail. Then you need to adjust for different speeds, the object ball spin, based on cue ball spin or the cut angle, and distance from the rail, etc. Study bank experts and try your own experiments. See if you don't agree that angle adjustments give a degree of precision you've never had before. Let's see some examples. I'm going to use this diamond bisect line because that's my favorite, but use the line for whatever system you prefer. Let's check the process with this head-on shot. Look at the shot. I'll see the line for my system. I'll look for the cut. It's zero. I'll do an adjustment, 14 and a half degrees, and then shoot it. The next shot is a cut bank. Find the line. Look for the cut angle. It's 14 and a half degrees. Look for an adjustment. I'm going to adjust to 30 degrees. Get down and shoot it. This shot is a cut bank. So let's find the line. Find the angle. 22 degrees. And let's think how much adjustment we make and then what the final cut angle will be. Taking a moment. Well, it's 36 and a half degrees. So let's either aim, let's aim short at 34 and then shoot soft. Or cut it more and shoot harder. The next shot seems to be a crossover bank. So let's check the line. Check the angle from that line. It's 14 and a half degrees. Consider what adjustment I need to make. Well, offset and shoot straight in. 
another crossover bank. Let's check the line, figure the cut angle to that line. It's 22 degrees. I need to make an adjustment. It'll be shoot at 14 and a half degrees and use draw. So we decided where to hit the rail, we determined the cut angle, and then made adjustments and shot. Here's a summary of what happened for me, and maybe on your table it'll be different. So here in part two we looked at regular shots, combination shots, and bank shots. We used a contact point technique and many stick measurement techniques. Table geometry is going to be covered in part three. Now remember, it's optional whether you want to use aim right angles in games. And if you do, judgment is the best way and you need to learn to develop judgment. These techniques are all alternatives when you're uncertain about what the cut angle is. And you don't need to use or learn all techniques. Just find ones that you're comfortable with. Developing these videos takes a lot of work and I'm not getting any ad revenue. If you're getting value, please consider making a donation to support my efforts. Go to my AIM Pro Billiards channel, select the About tab, click the Donate link that will take you to PayPal. Thanks for watching.